Good morning boys and girls, in this lecture we are going to go over persuasive paragraphs. Before we jump into the first example or the first sample of a, per of a persuasive paragraph, let's take, a look about, let's take a look at what are the different components of persuasive writing. The first component is pull your audience in an interesting hook in your introduction. At the very beginning, we will try to get their attention as much as we can because you're going to imagine yourself convincing your parent or one of your parents about buying you something. You have to start with something that would grab their attention in the very beginning. Second component is explain your point of view. This is like a topic sentence. This is where you tell what you want. Then you're going to start with giving reasons that will help your audience be persuaded. And you always start with really good reasons at the very beginning. You cannot tell your parent, I want this thing because I like it. I don't think it would be a, like a persuasive reason. You start with things that would really make this person think. Sway your audience. Try to get them at your side. Use convincing language. Address positive alternate, alternative points of view with reasons to counteract them. You have to give them, okay, you'll probably be uh, worried if you would buy me this thing, I would do something bad out of it. Let me comfort you, la la la, and so on. In this case, you're going to give positive alternative points of view. You're going to tell him, okay, if I got this thing, I won't be used negatively, and so on. Deliver a strong message as repeated in the conclusion. So we need to have a conclusion in this case. Entice your readers with proper word choice and sentence structure. You have to sound smart. You have to sound confident. You have to sound like you know what you're talking about. Let's jump into the first example. I'm going to persuade my neighbors to buy tickets to the school fair. This looks like a topic sentence. The school fair is right around the corner, so please start buying tickets. We are selling limited numbers of tickets at a discount. Uh, boys and girls, I took the liberty of bold faced of bold facing some of these words to show you how this person is trying to grab the reader's attention. So move fast and get yours while they are still available. When you tell a person it's on discount, so technically they are spending less money and they might buy more than one ticket. And when you tell them the tickets are available now and they will no longer available, people hate to miss on things. When you tell a person now it's available but later on it won't be, this person will be more encouraged into buying it. This is going to be an event that, will not, that you will not want to miss. First of all, the school fair is a great value when compared with other forms of entertainment. Great value. So whatever you're paying for, if it's of a great value in here. Also, your ticket purchase will help our school, and when you help the school, it helps the entire community. People like to help, especially when they're paying for fun stuff. If this fun part actually comes with help with a noble cause, people will do that. But that's not all. Every ticket you purchase enters you into a draw to win fabulous prizes. Oh, people love to win things, even when they don't need them. They just love to win things. And don't forget you'll have mountains of fun because there are acres and acres of great rides, fun games, and entertaining attractions. Remember when you're trying to sway, where is it? Sway your audience. Fun. It's entertaining. Uh, attractions spend time with your family and friends at our school fair buy your tickets now buy your tickets now this is actually a conclusion right now this is one fun example let's take a look at a different example this is that is more serious which is this one fire drills should be conducted in homes as well as in schools and other public places this is a topic sentence this is the claim that you have at the very beginning First of all, having regular fire drills at home would allow all family members to practice what to do in an emergency. The practice would reduce panic during a fire and perhaps make the difference between escaping safely and being trapped. This person kept keep on going on and on and on how in an emergency a person might escape safely instead of being trapped. This is something which would convince another people like other people to follow his lead. Second, having home fire drills would set a good example in the neighborhood. So you are not only helping yourself, you're affecting the neighborhood around you. You're giving an example to the people around you. Nearby families would be encouraged to have their own drills. 
most important, having fire drills at home would probably lead people to be more safety conscious so that fires would not get started in the first place. So in this case, when you do fire drills at home, you're telling in an indirect way to your son and daughter that they shouldn't play with matches, right? You're telling them that safety is very important. A few minutes, a few times a year can help save lives. This is the conclusion where a person is showing that a few minutes of your time, the fire drill, leaving everything, going out of the house, go underneath your building or, out, or outside your villa, you're just telling them this is how you save yourself. Thank you very much and be safe.